Which is the right way to approach an interval? Start hard and hold on to get max benefit or start easier and get harder throughout the effort? I felt that the first approach is better as it increases overall effort and thus adaptation. However, my TS, yep. and that's an assumption <laughs> on his end, right? He says, however, my TSS data says seven for seven on all intervals that they were all the same basically. But for the last two, they certainly felt harder than the previous ones. Um, so, and he says, and he mentions not just because they were at the end of the session, but because of the approach that he took. I Thanks wanna, five out of five on the podcast. I want to say a few things before we go through our notes. Cool. First, um, as you go through intervals at threshold, um, even the high sweet spot or above, um, it is very, 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 very common for your heart rate to go up for each and every interval. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like, happens to everybody. Yes. Every time. Like this is, we are fatiguing you and yeah. your body's getting more fatigued through the whole workout. So, yes. uh, that's to be expected. So yes. some of the cadence stuff might not even be related to that. You just be getting tired. That's another mm -hmm. tricky thing of heart rate. Exactly. Yep. The second one, if your, uh, effort level goes up, let's, let's say we, we could take that out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, what maybe you're finding is, Hey, I'm not very good at riding that 100 110 cadence. Then you need to make the decision is, is this needed in my racing? If yes, where I think hundred probably, I mean, if sure, but if you're yeah. a gravel racer, maybe you never do 110, you ride at 80 and that's your thing. Yeah. You don't need it. But if you're a mountain biker, oh yes. Crit. Yes. Sure. Uh, cyclocross. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to need to be able to like do with those. And then I would add some of those, um, cadence drills but into uh, easier workouts. Yes, exactly. Yes. So like, uh, there's one called Baxter. Yeah. So that is a whole cadence drill. <laughs> Nate's heard uh, of that one before. I don't always do the cadence. I never do the cadence drills on that anymore, but um, I'm pretty good at writing up lots of cadences and it doesn't mm -hmm. impact my RPE, yeah. but try it on the lower, uh, on lower wattages and being able to write at those and not on the harder ones. Um, yes. And two, just because something feels harder, which I think we're gonna get into more, yeah. does not necessarily mean you are getting more training benefit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In fact, uh, this is something that the guys from the strong Runner by science podcast talked about. And we actually talked about this one before there's like some bro science that makes so much sense in our minds, but data hasn't backed it up yet. That it's kind of like, like you really don't get benefit until like the last two intervals because that's in your stretching capacity. Right. Um, well, they say reps, but yeah, yeah reps for them. Yeah. But for us, like in the minds, it would be like intervals. Right. And, and they actually found that like, that's not the case that it's not the case that when you do those extra reps right at the end, that that's where you get like hypertrophy or whatever yeah. else they were going for. Ar Arnold said it like you get all the benefit and the last two reps. Yeah. 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 But, apparently not, <laughs> but apparently not uh, yeah. science doesn't necessarily back that up. Makes so much sense in our minds. Right. But yeah. you know, that's just how that goes. So like, it's important to make sure that you understand that like TSS is not equal to effort. Uh, yes. Yeah, right. That's, that's the one that decoupling that really needs to happen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard because we feel like, man, I feel like I, that was harder than the other one, but you still did the same amount of work and TSS is based off the work done. This is why when I can, uh, I take in caffeine. Yes. As far as we know, caffeine doesn't blunt aerobic adaptions, but it lowers the RPE. Mm -hmm. So during a workout, I have two choices. I can either actually increase the wattage, which will make me faster, or I do the same workout and it's not as hard, yep. which is to me, I love that because <laughs> yes. that, that I think that's less burnout, more likely to be consistent mm -hmm. and do things or eating, sleeping, sure. yeah, um, better long-term solution. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. You do a whole year where everything instead of an eight is a seven. Yeah. It's a lot, lot easier. This is something that you'll see common in common with all good mm -hmm. endurance athletes and coaches is that every workout should not feel like it absolutely drained you. You don't want that. Oh, you want easy days. You want days, mm -hmm. you want days where days. you feel like you are on top of it. Like, and you are on top of the ball and you just knock that workout out. Yeah. Don't worry about it. In one week, it might change and it might be hard, right? If you're consistent. And the cool part is if it's a little bit easier, it's going to make it easier to be more consistent. Mm -hmm. And if you can do more work, that's the one thing that we've found in terms of a consistent thing where fast people or like people that are doing a good job, like plus 4.5 watts per kilogram, that sort of stuff. One of the most common factors between all of them is consistency in training. I mm -hmm. can say that if you're more consistent, it's, like it's better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Off the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Off the couch, four watts. <laughs> ah, <it's> so annoying. <laughs> it is so annoying. <laughs> Nate's triggered right now. Um, but Just the, jealous. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, I think that John is kind of, and this is a tendency. I see this a lot. 
he's kind of trying to get the most out of it's every like interval ringing, or make it hard. Yeah. yeah. Ring, squeeze the juice. Squeeze the juice out. Right? Like make <clears throat> every interval even harder. Find ways to get more out of every interval. You'll get faster by being one, consistent, and two, adding volume. Mm -hmm. So you can either go up in volume in the plan level. Yep. Um, an easy way too is uh, you just add an extra 10, 20 minutes yep. at the end with our extend cooldown feature. Mm -hmm. Make that aerobic. Yep. Kind of what you would do a Baxter or Petted at. Um, that is a great way to add volume. I've had great success with that. I think a lot of writers here have. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't I can't sing the praises of that enough. It's easy. It's, it feels nice to do. It recovers you a little more for your next workout. And it like, doesn't, I don't think it recovers oh, well, you more for your next workout. It, yeah. You spin out your legs a little bit. Sure. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever, whatever that actually does. <laughs> um, but, and it also, it's like 20, 30, 40 more TSS a week and uh, over a long period of time. It, yes. The cool part about it is that it like it doesn't take that much more time. Where if you did another session, like it takes a lot more time. Totally. You just add an extra fifteen minutes, and uh, it's just there, right? Yeah. And then you're right, Pete. You do that every day, mm -hmm. uh, and it, I guess it could be an extra ten. So you could add sixty TSS to the week. That's a which lot. Which is like a that's a lot. A Makes solid a big workout. difference. So uh, let's just say you are in the situation of John where you feel like the workouts are too easy, and that's why you're trying to get more out of them. In that case, I just recommend you reassess. Well, he they're not, based on his heart rate going they up, are. they're not too easy, right? But let's just say you are, right? Yeah. Let's say you're in that situation, you feel like you're trying to get more out of the intervals because it feels easier than it should feel. Yeah. Re reassess. Reassess. And it, just also know that aerobic should feel easy and sweet spot should be challenging, but not, I'm throwing up. Yeah, soul yes. crushing. Soul crushing, yeah. Like, um, and that, I mean, if you don't fuel, we've talked about this before with Andrew. Sweet spot can feel really bad. Yeah, it can feel <laughs> really, really fuel. bad. But yeah. if it's, you don't have to make those hard. But in this workout though, 0.8 IF, solid. Yeah. But, you know, it, I don't even know which plan this, this is not even in a plan, so he's just cherry picking. Yeah. Um, you could go for the plus one or there's a plus, there's all, it goes up to, oh my goodness, plus eight. <laughs> it goes up to plus eight. So if you want more, mm -hmm. choose another plus and you can do a whole bunch more intervals. So sure. it goes up to an hour and 45 minutes at 0.82, which yep. is still, that's hard, but it's still doable. It's eight of these instead of four. Yep. Some other things, if you feel like you need more, right? Uh, in one regard or another, strength training. Like uh, maybe you aren't strength training, you can add that in. Yep. Uh, focus on the kid, and then when we talk about like the cadence side of things, like focus on a cadence range that's outside of your familiarity, but you don't need to go crazy. Like yeah. mm -hmm. you don't need to go down to fifty and do one hundred and thirty, something yeah. like that, unless but, you plan on for some reason using those in yeah. your race. If you're a track guy, yeah, or so cute, track rider, mm -hmm. you you definitely want to be able to do really high cadence. Sure, but really, I'm never going above. 110 120 hardly ever like and i don't need to practice that i don't need to do 150 spin-ups sure yeah yeah exactly yeah. so it's it's really prepping in terms of cadence just prep for what you plan on racing for and it is really good like nate said to be familiar with a wide range but doesn't have to go crazy and then i guess the last thing but this is there's a lot of like uh asterisks with this one if it does feel like you just need to add more and you have the need for heat adaptation coming up for some sort of hot event that you're going to do, then you can start to incorporate, you know, dropping your cooling down or something like that when you're training. But if you drop that down on workouts like Ainsley, where it's like 105% FTP, that's probably going to be really limiting in terms of your ability to complete the intervals where you want to start to add that in is on lower intensity mm -hmm. stuff. Like we're talking really low intensity or after the workout or mm -hmm. after the yeah. best case scenario is to separate it entirely from your training, right? To just do the sauna time or sit in the hot bathtub with your hands and feet submerged. And to do that directly after the workout, directly after, directly yeah. after rather yeah. than doing it in the work. Cause then you can just make both optimized and no, it's going to take like seven, 10, two weeks to like get the adaptions. And then I forget exactly how fast they go away, but it's fast. It's like a week. It's fast. So mm -hmm. if you start doing it now and you're not consistent because you have a hot race, you have Kona coming up next October. <laughs> yeah. Uh, might not benefit you. What I want to see, and everyone has any research on this, please put it in the forum post on this is if you take two groups and you have one be heat adapted can they then go deeper on these workouts mm -hmm. or does it then lower the rpe because it's just like the caffeine thing right mm -hmm. totally. do i have a choice to do that and yeah. then over over time over six months if i continue this mm -hmm. is my performance going to be better right mm -hmm. i don't know exactly i would yeah I'm, i would think that maybe maybe possibly uh once again maybe. It makes sense in the mind. <laughs> I know. But that's what I want to see the results. Um, yeah. Oh, man. That's how it goes, right? If you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel. Maybe even give this video a like with a thumbs up and a comment down below. 
If you want to see race analysis videos, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, which you should, you should go over to trainerroad.com. It'll make you faster. We promise. We guarantee it, right, Nate? Guaranteed. <laughs> or your money back. Yes, it's true, actually. We, we really will do that. Yeah.